Who is presenting, please? Okay, um, good morning. My name is Idris. Okay. Yeah, I will present it for um, the vice question. Thing. Are you all here? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. So, um, firstly, our, um, our project was, um, this is the introduction of, of, of our project. So, this, this is just um, explaining the details of, uh, you can see my screen. Right? Yes, we can. Okay. So, this is just explaining um, the details of our, our presentation of our, um, our problem statement. So the bicycle sharing system is a means of renting bicycles. So, so we can um, read this up. Now, the, the data generated by these systems makes them um, attractive for researchers. So we want to actually, um, the aim of our project is to combine the historical um, patterns of people that have rented bicycles based on weather. So um, now this is uh, the data field that we have. So we have the time, um, which the date time, the season, the early day, the um, working day, then the rest like that. So, I, can you can you all hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Hello. We can hear you, Idris. So, so um, the methods we used. So we used um train testly to to make uh to um this to split uh data the old data so then we tried different regression because we are actually looking for values uh, we are looking for target uh, target values so definitely we are having um, a regression um problem so so we used this um five regression um problem um regression models the linear regression, the um, sorry, this this six, the linear, the other um, boost, the XG boost, the um, bugging, SVR, and random first. So, this is part of our pre um, pre processing um, stage. So, we are given daytime feature. So, we had to convert our daytime feature to be able um, to use it on our. Uh, on our data so so we add this graph showing our weekdays so our weekdays in, uh, you know from monday to um to sunday so this graph is showing how the um the the number of uh the number of rentals that i made during the weekday according to um weekdays then we also add our uh, um, visualizations on the monthly basis too because we feel this this date time is is one of the major factors in um this uh, uh problem statement so the day the month so you know according to the the normal this is mondays to uh, maybe fridays should should contain more uh should be more work day and things like that so we we felt it is necessary to um to to check the weekdays check, and check. and you know the month month also determines when which month is for the um rainy season which month is the dry season so we would want to know if at um in the months that contain the rainy season we want to know if the renters are much then or not so that was um that's what 
what these vis <coughs> visualizations are for. Then we made um, box plots on the counts for the working day. The working day according to um, the data we have. Then we had four seasons. Quite all right. So we had so we are still working majorly. Our, our problem majorly was on um, the weather weather conditions. So we had um, all this. Then the time also the time of the day too was also considered so these um block box plots shows all this and um moving on so we want to check the correlations using um the heat map so um with this the the heat map it is noticed that temperature has a positive um, correlation with the count of bicycle rentals. So, meaning that um, when temperature is high, the bicycle rentals are, are, are much then. So, meaning perhaps when the sun is out, people tend to like um, move. Um, people tend to like want to move faster to places that they are going which is um which is um sensible enough and perhaps when the rain is falling and when temperature goes down people don't move outside people don't go out so then however the hours at which the renters were made as they are a positive correlation to the humidity so considering humidity too um humidity also shows a negative correlation with the count Meaning when the humidity is high, then um, the rentals, the number of counts for rentals drops, so which is um, sensible enough to. Then we used, um, our metric was the um, root mean square logarithmic um, log error, error. So um, we checked other metrics but we just um finalize on using this method because we feel it's um it's 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 better so and while when we check the values so the linear regression we, we check the values um on the six um on the six regression models that we used so out of all this, it was found out that um, the random forest gave the lowest, which means it per performs better than others that, um, that are, it performs best. Yes, let me put it that way. So I've um, said this earlier. So with the algorithms used and the, um, and using the RMSLE, to test the correctness so uh it's it was seen that linear regression and other boosts produce estimates that are lower than the actual value then um the rms early shows that random forest will be the best algorithm so given the current data set okay so our conclusion is this though we have not how will I put it? We have not made um, uh, a, a total conclusion like that, recommendations and um, other things. So we are still working on. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. So. This is um, a conclusion. So there's an increase in demand in summer than other seasons. I think I've um, explained um, that earlier. Then there's more rental in the evening than mornings and afternoon, according to what we have in the time here. So we still want to consider other factors, but you know we just have to present now. 
then um maybe from your oh, from the panel's um recommendations and um and comments we would know some other things that we can add or um or subtract so this is um where our work is still um pending for now so um i think i'm done thank you Thank you, Idris. Okay, contributions. Uh, I'll start with Teju this time around. Teju Made. Okay, maybe Teju Made just that. Stepped out. Um, Udeme. Um, yeah, so the I mean, conclusion kind of uh, let me want to ask. Um, in my head, I was asking what was the what was the problem you're trying to solve? Like, what's the Problem statement again. I don't know. Maybe you could just take it to that slide. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can you now? Yeah, I'm like, can you like take it to your problem statement slide? Okay, yeah, this is it. Okay, 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 cool. So, first of all, I really like the the way you, I mean, for the most part, um, this is the kind of thing, like, I really wanted, like, to see more of, like, a little bit of your code and then your analysis, too, which is really great. And... Um, I like the way you did the analysis. Can you go back to that place of the um, the the box plot and then your correlation? Oh yeah. So you had like um, a lot of outliers here. I don't know if you mentioned it, but I'm interested in how you also dealt with the outliers. Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, guys, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you, Demi. I can hear you, Pukhi. Oh, okay, bye. Did you get my question? about box plots uh -huh. from there. Uh, I can hear anything. Uh, I think I think we can't really hear you, um Idris. Try maybe speak louder or I don't know, maybe you're far away from your device. Hello can can you hear me now? Yes we can hear you now. Okay. So you were talking of box plot before Yeah, yeah. Uh, I even know I heard you right. Yeah, I was, I was actually saying like, yeah, from these your plots, like there are loads of outliers. I don't know if you mentioned it, but I'm quite interested in how you actually dealt with the outliers across your different, I mean, variables or features. Um, okay, so we found outliers on... On almost every um, 
part of the the features of her. So Hello, can someone from his group answer the question? If um, we can hear him. Hello. Uh. Okay, try and speak, Idris. Let's see if we can hear you. Hello? Okay, Karan Tunde wants to speak. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So, as I said earlier, we have not no. we just have um basic. You know, we we had the outliers now, so we work on the current data, the default data. So we have not done a uh, data engineering on what we have presently. So, I think that was why I said, um, if you, from your, from your comments, from the comments of the, okay, let me say from the comments of uh, the panels, uh, so we would know the next step. So this is just the, the default, um, features that we have that we worked on presently so if i if i understand you clearly it means that um, you just trained the model with the raw data and then you came up with those conclusions can i answer that yeah sure i mean okay um no, that is not right. Um, because we did some classification on the data, and that is how we were able to get all this stuff. We, from the daytime, we extracted the the day. We started into day, month, weekday, month, and um, hours. And that is how we were able to get this bus bus plot. So this bus plot. We also splitted, we also did um, the dummy data on the season and the weather. We did that also. So this way, how we were able to come up with this plot or to split engines to, to actually get different, different, um, different futures. And this, the first plot was on um, the cans was showing the cans, then the other one was showing different seasons, then this was showing the cans against each hour per day. Then the last one was showing, is it, a, is, is it a working day or not? Then we did for holidays, we did for um, temperature, atmospheric temperature, wind speed, we did others also. Oh yeah, great. I mean, the feature engineering part is really cool. I mean, trying to get like more features from the original data that you got, that's quite interesting and it's like a very good point. However, I, I'm, I'm just interested because I mean, if from the features that you got, there are still like loads of outliers here. And if you directly trained your model with this, then we will most likely not use that model because it will not give us like a perfect representation of I mean, what we really want. So my question really is, yeah, I mean, you've gotten like the extra features based on your engineering, which is quite awesome. But then like, did you do anything like to short circuit or deal with the outliers that are very prominent in all of these features that I'm seeing right now? Because if you trained your model directly, even with the outliers, then we may, as, we may as well not use your model for anything because we will not be able to trust it because it's totally outlier based. Can you repeat that again, please? I, yes. I don't know if you, if, you, if you understand what I just said. Or maybe other people can contribute. Like any, anybody from the panel can also, maybe I'm not explaining it right here. So. Okay, so um, 
But what the world the man is trying to say, what he's asking is this. Yeah, um, you did some <clears throat> data engineering on your data. You got some extra features from the data. But um, from the plots that you have now, it's very evident that they are outliers, right? And outliers, having outliers in your model can actually be detrimental to um, its performance. So his question is, was there and did you do any um, treatment to the data to like um, reduce the outliers to normalize the data? Yes, I, I did do anything. I think we did. Yes, we, we. I think we did not because um, this was just all these were a plot before the. Before the, train, the, 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 the training, then before we trained, I think we, we used um, standard scalar to actually see from different points. Then later, we now, we now, we now removed some other, we, we now removed some other, some other things that are not needed before we actually use other methods. And if you if you actually check our uh, linear regression, you see that um, the RSMLE is higher than others. So that was how we had we had to use other regression um, models to to train the data. But we we have actually removed out the outlier while using other mo other models on it. Okay. Well, um, let's not. All right, I wouldn't want, so I just want us to make progress anyway. But I mean, from what you said, what I would advise would be that um, I think you should try more to pay more attention to structuring or how to structure like an entire data analysis or a machine learning project. The things, the step, steps that you need to follow because I think there's something that is missing in, I mean, what you're saying, and it doesn't really add up at some point. So I just want, like I would advise the team to pay attention to the things. I mean, there could be a lot of buzzwords. Obviously there are lots of them, which you might want to jump to, but just before that, try to have an understanding of the why, you know, like the why you're doing this and what are you getting from, I mean, the at this particular thing that you're doing. Because yeah, I mean, we talked about the outliers and you also mentioned using other algorithms and that most likely after taking care of the outliers, which is just um, like I would say buzzwords, you know? So, yeah. So I think like just try to pay more attention on the entire process, like what should come before what and what does this process actually do? I think it's to actually help, I mean, your understanding of, what to use and what not to use and when to use what to use to get. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Thank you, Demi. Um, Kelechi. Is Kelechi I'm still on the call? I think Kelechi has left the call. Um, George. Well, um, I think it was a good presentation before we discovered some, according to the man, bus goes. <laughs> but personally, I like the presentation. I like the, um, the flow of the presentation. And um, the visualization was on point. But that was also your, you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't lie with visualization. That's just the truth. So, that was also not necessary. I don't want to use the word down for it. It was not a down for it. It was just like an observation that's here. So um, looking at the whole flow, I think it was a good one. But also based on what the other person said about this, um, this particular slide is a representation of what you guys did before training. So it could have made sense you have another slide that will tell us what you guys did after. So not, is it before training? After you discovered there was like an outlier, the whole process is after that, like we'll compare you 
like we'll see like another um, part of it rather than just showing us um, before this before is not justifying the work you have done you can as well as take this out yeah so sometimes um you 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 do uh, you do a lot of visualization the reason why you do a lot of visualization is because one of the is because you know what you're doing that's one just not apply any method because you think that oh it's cool it's cool of course it is cool but know the kind of visualization you are trying to present know how to interpret your visualization because a lot of questions will be coming out of your visualization and you should know how to defend your visualization so for me i don't know what you guys did after that so I, i'm really bothered about that I, I i can't say much but i like the flow maybe i think you guys could have spent more time on 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 your work I believe you could have, your presentation could have been seamless, but it was more or less like this slide is making everything look, is trying to like jeopardize your, your efforts. But let's leave this slide alone. Personally, the flow, I enjoy the flow. I enjoy the fact that you could, um, you could present your code and also present um, your, your chats and your tables. I think that's, that's cool. I like the, um, Covariance, uh, correlation matrix. That's also another thing. And also, you said something about the metric. Like, you define your metric. There's also always a standard metric, but if you know that there are a lot of metrics in that space, you pick like one or two, you compare your model and see how they perform on each and every one of these metrics. So then you can from there you can infer like a reasonable conclusion that okay this is why we chose this based on this metric or you can also yeah there, there are different ways you can go about that you said something about but because you there's a particular statement you made about your metric I, I was not really comfortable with that statement but that is just by the way and um also another thing i noticed was that um i don't know whether you guys use um, maybe cross validation or maybe you guys actually had like a proper validation set uh personally i assume once you use train um train test splits you have to and data sets you have train you have test so i might be wrong so what's up with your validation set how come you don't have a validation set so that's another question i would want to I have like is if there's an improvement, you should work on that. But in general, like um, it, it, it was a good presentation in general. Like this is like one of my best presentation in terms of visualization, in terms of flow. I'm not going to say anything apart from that. Like I like the way this is how every other every other group should present their work. Like show you a bit of your code, show what your table looks like. Yeah, that flow is good. But apart from that, you did some awesome stuff. And yeah, that's all I can say about that. It was a good one. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, Madi. Yeah, I mean, that, good job, um, guys. I just wanted to say that before, <laughs> before we, I mean, this is amazing, but I also acknowledge the fact that there are like tons of examples. In fact, the example we gave was this same bike sharing. So I think they had much more resources to consult than some of the other things, which we also should acknowledge. Like, like um, the, 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 that's the course that Kenya and I did it was basically bike sharing. If I'm, I'm not wrong. Um, sure. Yeah, right. So, so yeah, I just wanted to mention that, like, yeah, the, the group had lots of. I would be disappointed if we didn't have a fantastic presentation. Um, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't be disappointed. But I just feel like, oh, you had lots of resources. But yeah, great job putting it all together. There's one. There's one thing to have lots of resources. There's another thing to be able to put it together. And also, some of the goal of the project were probably not very clear to some of the team, which is understandable. Um, when you when you just start working with machine learning and all, um, sometimes not every if like you, you don't see the bigger goal. You just like want to like train um, 
random forest, exchibos, and then you're comparing accuracy, blah, 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 and you forget about the main goal or something like that. It happens like as you, as you proceed, you start seeing the overall, overall vision and you start like using this as just a tool to, to achieve your goal and what, what they have. But um, I don't, feedback wise, I think, um, judge and put them in or like um, they did a good job like with the comments so I don't have more much more to add to that but all the best looking forward to future work from you all good job to all the members of the team members of the team thank you okay uh, I'm allowed to give one small Okay, let me give. So um, it's not, it's just uh, maybe something you guys can try out though. So I was expecting to see something like a line plot showing um, a line plot of probably the, not probably, yeah, but a line plot of the count against the days, yeah. So it will just kind of show you um, um, how um, the, um, the, the number of bikes being rented increase per day right so that that plot kind of gives you um, confidence of what you're doing so if you know how it um, happens in a day yeah you can then and um, if you know how it happens say probably for a month for each days in each of the days in a month you can then use your algorithm or your model rather to like um predict and then compare it against the real um um plots of that um, for that particular problem so it kind of gives you um, visually apart from probably your, your using your mean squared error or root mean squared error it kind of gives you a visual um, description of how well your model is trying to um, predict the counts per day right so it's just something you guys can try out probably on your own so overall is a nice presentation yeah so i think that's the end. Um, I would have wanted um, the, the three teams from the last um, presentation to maybe give an update. Yeah, but I don't know if there's anyone that wants to give an update. Maybe choose a room. How many minutes do we have? So maybe just five minutes. Hello? Hello, can you? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, um, I, okay, since the time is very, very small, should I still share my screen or just rush through like the whole No, you can share your screen. Now? You can share your screen. Maybe it will take only years. Yeah. Okay. Um. <clears throat> um. Can you see my screen? Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Come on, everybody. Um. So quickly following up on like an update of what we did last week. Um, taking into consideration uh, all the suggestions made by the um, panelists, so we tried to make a few improvements to both our um, both to the um, presentation and also to the model, seeing how we could make it better. Um, sorry, let me try and make this all. Okay, can you still see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes, I can. Okay, so run through it quickly. We started out by clearly um defining the two problem statements we had for the um for the project. One was um the rest um from the restaurant's perspective, them trying to get a model that could help them to quickly identify high quality white. And then second being from like an academic point of view from like trying to identify 
which properties make a red wine feel from like a consumer's perspective um, using machine learning. Um, so we carried out the project using um, basically three steps started by properly identifying the problem to enable us to know how well we could uh, to know the routes we take in solving it um, as well as we looked at taking into consideration um, IK's suggestion we looked at the uh, problem from the business owner's perspective because like that's as a business owner from like the mistakes we made last week we saw that a business owner would prefer to can make do with a few false positives compared to um, false ne negatives like in the real life it has a um, um, much of an impact um, relating towards um, customer retention and uh, if we are looking at it from a health perspective having a false negative is really really risky so we try to um, see what we could do about that uh, then we carried out after identifying the problem carried out um, data analysis which involved um, data cleaning um, there were very little cleaning to be done. We didn't really um, detect any outliers in the data. And then we carried out the feature creation um, of like an extra, uh, an extra column or an extra output variable that um, converts, that changes the problem to a binary um, classification perspective, showing which one is good and which one is bad. Like just basically simplifying the quality to uh, two variables, good or bad or good or normal, whichever we look at it. Um, then we did um, explorations and visualizations on it. And then we carried out um, and proceeded to build our models. Um, so what helped us to identify the, uh, the, the problem itself was checking, um, checking through the uh, model, uh, checking through the data set to see what kind of data we're dealing with. Um, we could see there were like 11 input features or 11 um, input variables and one single output variable. And we saw the data set was properly ordered, but we also saw from this diagram here that the quality scores were imbalanced and it could have like an effect when we are trying to train a model because the model will be biased slightly towards the normal uh, wines which scored between five and six so as you could see here this shows uh, that there are no null um, variables or no non no no rules so there are no missing variables as uh, there are no missing uh, variables there as well so it helped us to identify uh, the problem as a multi-class classification problem because we had the uh, one two three four five six six um, variables in the single output um, output feature um, which made it the multi-class essentially and we also showed that the data was um, imbalanced so that helped us to classify the problem as a multi-classification problem with an imbalanced data set um, so we proceeded to carry out our analysis checking um, the spread of the various um, quality scores this also after we um, carried out the feature creation, which checked the distribution of the good wine relating to the to the bad wine, this being the good wine, this being the bad wine. And we saw the there were a whole lot of bad wine from that perspective compared to the number of uh, good wine, I think almost 1,400 to 200. And then we also saw the um, spread of um, values here. If you could see the, um, the diagram at the top, you could see uh, the 25th percentiles of each input features. Um, like what I was talking about, um, that the data sets, some of the um, numbers there, this being a classification problem, we needed um, the data sets to be such a way that there will be no bias towards weight allocations. So if you could see it, um, some of the um, features had like um, very low, um, very low, um, how do I call it, quantities, like 7.1 compared to 22 here or seven here. And at the maximum, you're having something like 289 compared to 1.5. And so that could create kind of like an accuracy problem when you are trying to carry out future importance um, 
determination for any model you create. Um, so we also checked out the correlations between um, various uh, features with the help of a heat map and a cluster map. Um, the heat map showed how how well you could check um, how you could check the relativity of various uh, features to the output variable. So if you could quickly identify the um, the quality variable, the quality output feature here, and check the individual um, features relating to it. Um, the deep red um, color location being high positive um, relations or high positive relationship or high direct relationship, and the blue being a high inverse relationship. So, as I, I said last week, um, the volatile acidity showed the highest um, uh, inverse relationship to the quality score while the alcohol showed the highest positive relationship. Uh, so this also helped me in um, getting the features that were kind of like carrying out the feature selections on which features were important or which features could, um, were very important in pinpointing uh, whether a wine was good or not. And from the cluster map, you could see here that um, there were features here that were related um, you could see um, alcohol and quality showing straight, um, strong relationship. The total and free sulfur dioxide, um, I mentioned last week, the free sulfur dioxide was a subset of uh, the total sulfur dioxide. And you see residual sugars, chloride and sulfate, all probably can be looked at as impurities in the wine. And um, the density as well standing alone. Then the fixed acidity showing strong relationship as well with citric acid. So this helped us in the second problem, which was to identify which physiochemical properties made red wine good. And this was just a numerical representation of the correlations between um, each um, features as they relate to each other. Um, I didn't include that in the heat map, so I white close in the um, diagram. So this was the numerical representation of the heat map. Um, so we use the block, box plot to check for the distribution of each variable across uh, distribution of each variable. Um, we this was how we could determine there was not really any um, outliers in the data. Um, as you could see, some of them were skewed. They had slightly uh, low average uh, values. Some had a medium. Some had high. But the distribution of the variables were actually okay. So it helped us in making the decision that there were no outliers. So at the end of the discoveries, like I pointed out last week as well, we saw some strong correlations between features. We also um, found out there was no obvious influencing variable apart from alcohol and volatile acidity. And then the quality scores were imbalanced. And also there were a huge variance in the variables of the 11 um, impulse variables, like I mentioned, the total and free sulfur dioxide, total sulfur dioxide were having very high variances in their uh, values as well. Um, so we proceeded to building our machine learning models, um, carried out pre-processing, pre um, we, we did um, a future selection, we did, um, um, we, carried, we employed smooth oversampling sampling technique to correct the imbalance. We used um, the train test splits to split the data into the testing and training or um, um, data sets. Then we, the metrics used in evaluating the models were the accuracy score, the F1 score, the confusion metrics, the mean absolute errors count, the classification report. Um, then this essentially showed after we fitted the data to the respective models, we used um, five um, different models. Um, the, this showed the, uh, we took into account the customers, sorry, the business owner's perspective. Like I explained um, at the initial stage, um, like I explained earlier that you tend to make do with a few number, you can make do with few false positives, but false negatives have like a very high consequences in as much as, okay, you put the wine up as a high quality wine, it comes with a high price tag. And at the end of the day, the customer tastes it and is as good as rubbish. And that essentially spoils 
the way he views your restaurant and i'll probably be like a very the last time he comes to your restaurant so that um contributes towards having a good customer retention or a bad customer retention so we concentrated on the second the first data set which used the uh, output the output of uh, the multi-class um, output variable as the um, as a single output feature so each of this confusion matrix was able to show the true um, true false positives and false negatives um, the interpretation of each of them is um, when you look at it from going towards the um, on the horizontal perspective it shows the true values of the true the true scores of these um, samples used of, of the test samples then if you look at it from a vertical um, perspective it shows you the predicted quality scores so as you can see here um, the logistic rejection um, for the quality score of treats predicted um, that was four plus four i think that's close to six eight eighteen eighteen samples it predicted um, three quality score for eighteen samples when the original quality scores of the original sample number of samples that had the quality score of three was two so 18 compared to two that's a whole lot of um, false negatives so that was what we used to assess um the our various models instead of using um the accuracy score so we took that correction from last week as well so we used as you can see here the decision tree also did pretty well um it had just one um prediction one sample prediction of three quality score when the original was two so somehow you could that's a lower number of um, false negatives compared to a model like the logistic regression so the random forest model was the best model for our preferred metrics which was false negatives and false positives um, it had the accuracy score of 73.1 as well and the f1 score of 71.7 um, so we're able to also get an idea of the weight of each features the model was able to allocate or the weight um the weight um the weight um, allocations for each input features um so we could see the volatile acidity had the highest importance um the alcohol was followed by the alcohol then the citric acid the total sulfur dioxide and sulfate as well um ph chlorides and it just shows the arrangement of for me descending order of the each um the importance of each future relative to quality scores um, so this was also its confusion metrics i think it also did pretty well having like one um one false negative um, prediction here three compared to two it still did pretty well um so for this was the scores for the um the models for each data set group the first being the um the um binary the one that used the binary classification format um output of zero zeros and one so the time we try was good and we try was bad the simple vector sorry the support oh my god i didn't change that the support vector machine svc model performed best for the first data set group then the second data set group the support vector um sorry the random forest model random forest classifier model performed the um, best for the quality scores as the uh, single output variables so our performance reviews was the uh, the models actually had higher metric scores when fitted with the data set group whose output variable was the vertex column when compared with the ones fitted with the quality follow um, the ones that had their output variable as the quality column we also tried improving our models with um, grid search and cost validation and we ended up seeing higher number or high an increase in the accuracy scores for all model um, we part of what i also did was i took into consideration the suggestions made and i did a bit of research about which um how to improve um or how to reduce the number of false negatives um in false negative um, predictions in our model i came across i tried i tried to the mesome recommendation of uh, 
carrying out the combining um models i tried combining the um decision tree model and the um random forest model because they had like the two highest um, accuracy scores for um predicting um the, for the data set that used the quality uh, the quality column or the quality scores are the output uh, variable um they didn't really have much of a improve i won't say much of an improvement because when i used it with the um the weight of one and one like allocating a uh, one one to each uh model to each of the model that was the decision tree and the random forest i had a quality score of an accuracy score of 0 0.67 then when i allocated um one for the decision tree and 1.5 for the random forest the accuracy increased to 0 0.7 which was still within the range of the original random forest um, classification or even slightly below the accuracy score of the original model so um combining the models didn't really have much of an effect i used the um, uh, voting classifiers as the means of um, combining those models um so i also looked up of some concepts like um a bomb ferrari the bond ferroni correction um that used them um, an alpha score of, uh, like a 0 .0, 0 0.05 basically it's like the it's like the um how would i call it the uh, probability of getting it assigns the probability values for ascertaining whether a prediction was null or not so um, i found out that the most common variable people use for the alpha is 0 0.05 it's almost like the default so um then um when i tried using the bomb for any correction on the random forest uh, classifier i didn't really see it's like i didn't really see much of an improvement in the accuracy scores or i even saw like a degradation in the accuracy score and also um predictions of false negative and false positive maybe it was the way i applied it because i applied it to um the um the the data sets directly i didn't i didn't apply it to the model i applied it to data sets so it reduced i saw it reduced the number of mp features from 11 to 3. that was what i noticed and when i carried out the whole uh, when i tested it out on all models i saw lower accuracy scores and lower false or higher false negative predictions i also looked at a concept they call um, boom filters which i was still seeing i'll find out from um the team today um uh, sorry can can you hear me hello yeah, we can hear you. okay yeah so i was also saying i would um, um inquire about the bloom filter um bloom filters for i i found that it has like when you apply it it gives you a it gives you zero false negatives so i was looking i didn't really understand it was a bit complex so i have not figured out fully how to apply it to my model as well so that was the improvement I made on that front. Um, so the conclusion was the same as last week. Um, the, I listed out six most influential features of uh, um, physiochemical features of wine that make it good, as long as there are varying ranges which would be classified as, which any sample that falls within them can be classified as good, satisfying these six uh, um, features. And I also re would recommend, in this case, the random forest class classifier model for accurate predictions of uh, wine quality scores, because um, the the wine quality scores would give you a better, uh, a better, a higher degree of um, kind of a higher degree of accuracy when predicting, rather than just predicting whether a wine is good or not. You tend to have more false negatives that way. So the accuracy of um, the Random forest classifier was better um, for like it was a good was a better model for accurately predicting wine scores. So we also advised them, same as last week, to get a much larger, diverse, um, a much diverse um, sample size data. I don't think it necessarily needs to be larger, but it should be diverse if you want to apply um, such a model to different wine groups apart from the vino verd or uh, wine type. So that was that was the improvement we made. So I would pose the question to the panel as well to like give us ways of which we can 
improve uh, improve the metrics of models or also improve the reduce the number of uh, false negatives that models could predict so thank you oh, it took too much time again okay thank you yeah um let me start with Yeah, <clears throat> she's a room. This is yes. like really did that. I don't know. Permit uh, me to say I feel so good right now because I mean, you literally like took the feedback and then you tried to uh, work with the feedback and even do much more than the feedback that you got. This is quite interesting. And I just want to say, well done. And I just you didn't do this alone. I hope you did it with your team so that the knowledge will also be shared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. That's, it's always a struggle to answer that question. Not like yeah, thank you. Yeah, so the the question that you asked, I mean, how how do you try to reduce your false negatives, right? That's what you said. Yeah. Well, for me, like from my own experience, I mean, you've tried like some methods that I've not even sure I've tried them before, which is quite interesting. I need to look that up. But for me personally, I just try to, um, how do I explain this? Like, I, I, I can't say I have, a process or a way or a path to do this for me it's still it's still like some kind of tuning and back and forth like i'm struggling because there's actually like nothing for me to say okay so you do this and then you do that and then you do that i really don't have like that kind of definition i just i try like a lot of things try to randomize a lot of things in my data if it's possible, try to add more data sets, try to augment the data, like just play with it. So the model can have like a better understanding of what the exact true positives are so that I can also understand what the false negatives should be. And I also try to look at those false negatives. What are like, what are the characteristics of that particular um, data set or that what are the characteristics of those variables that make up those false negatives sometimes you might find something very strange or something very unique in those ones that are different from every other one and then you might be able to add one or two to it but i don't really have like personally i don't have like a straight through process i just do like a lot of things and look out for those false negatives, what what what's their characteristics? What are the variables? What what are they saying that the model is still not picking it correctly? Okay. okay. So like understanding the data better, right? Yeah, like yeah. You try to like for me, I try to look like after I've tried like a lot and not seeing a lot of it. I try to look at those false negatives, those data sets. I mean, what's peculiar about you, and then try to you know, compare with the other data set. I mean, is there like a unique thing? Is there like something very obvious that probably I can't just see if I'm doing like an overview. So I need to like go into the data set properly. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lene. George, do you have something? George. Um, the presentation to me was an excellent one. Um, I like the fact that you took all the all necessary um, advice that was given last week. You did like an awesome job in updating your slides, and I think it's a good one. So let me just um, let me just go over what I think you improved. The, the feature extraction part was good. The problem identification was more insightful. It was not like just like it was not like last week's own. It was more insightful. We had like chats, we had um, like um, codes also, which was a good one. 
like um, summary description, like uh, they describe the info, like uh, like that. So um, the data analysis was also a good one, whereby you you talked about not the data analysis, the model analysis was actually a very good. It was very important for me because it was not just one metric. You mentioned like I think three or four metrics, so which was very important. I really like that part of it. And also another thing that was interesting for me was the weight associated with each features. Yeah, I like that part of it. It was more or less like model interpretability. The grid search, you said the grid search um, and cross validation improved your your model um, performance. Yeah, is expected. So that's actually a very, it was a wonderful update for me. So back to your question, what can you do about it? Just like what Udeme said. Um, just to claim before I go through what Udeme said, your, your model is as good as your data. That's all I can tell you. Like your model is not that smart. But if you have good data, you have smart model. If you have dumb data, you have dumb model. So it's not rocket science. So you don't sometimes the question now is going to be, what is the source of error in your system, in your machine learning pipeline? What is the source of error? And most times the source of error, if it is not in the pipeline, the most, this most source of error might come from the inputs. So what are the kind of source, what source of, sources of error can you get from the inputs? Random, randomization, um, mislabel, might be another source of imp um, another source of uh, another source of error. Um, the measuring instruments, like what instrument did they use to measure? Did they used to obtain these results, these values. That might be another source of um, another source of error. And I think some some sources of error are unknown. You don't know. Maybe um, the weather was not just right that day <laughs> and, and the person got the reading. Like there's different sources of error. So, and one way to mitigate um, sources of error is um, you get more data. Like it's just, I think it's law of large number. Like when you have more data, you have a better representation of your problem. So more data will solve that problem. But another thing you can also do is that particular instances you're having that issue with, look at it, look at that data. What is the problem with that data? It might not even be your model. It might just be the data that is the problem. So you should always think about your data. Your data is very important. I think initially we always bother, once you start in MA, we always bother about the models you use. But eventually you discover that your model is not that, um, let me not say your model is not as smart, but your model is as good, your, your model is as good as your data. So it's very important you think about your data. Yeah, but in general, awesome presentation. Once again, thanks for your updates. Like, I like the fact that you went through everything and you, like you did justice to everything. I have nothing to say. It was just a beautiful presentation, but also your time management is, oh, is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from that, it was a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Junch. Uh, okay, so we are rounding up. So, well, before we round up, I just wanted to say one more thing for Chizirum, just very quickly. So maybe you can go and read up on thresholding. Yeah, and that's the area under the curve thresholding. Um, true positive plots, true positive and um, against false uh, negative plots. And um, it will give you an idea of um, what that question you asked here. So if you remember when we did um, logistic regression, uh, you remember we said something like the output of your um, logistic regression model is your sigmoid. And um, you can, your, your threshold would, everyone would intuitively see the threshold is probably at um, 0 0.5. But you can actually increase or reduce this um, threshold depending on the kind of problem that you're saying, you, uh, you brought up here. So you were saying something like, um, um, it's, it's better you sell, um, I think you said it's better you sell the, uh, you, you predict wrongly the red, um, the, the, 
quality wines that you would sell um that you want to sell um, expensively as um, low quality wines because you don't want a customer to come buy a bad wine for a very high price yeah so check read up on threshold and see how you can tweak your thresholds to um, um kind of tell your model that okay um when it is um if, if you if you feel that it is more of a, a, a if your if your model is confused whether it's a, a good wine or a, a bad wine, just okay, maybe just put it in the bad wine class so that we don't lose customers you get. So it's just something you can go try out, right? All right, no problem. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I'll be sending out um, emails to everyone to just know the next steps. Um, some groups have not submitted their their the reports and then the presentations and the rest. So I'll still send email as regards that and every other thing that um, we need to know. So thank you, George. Thank you, Udeme. Um, thank you, Adirayo. Thank you, um, Tejmadi. Thank you, everybody. Not which is no longer here, but thank you, everyone. Uh, Thanks, everyone. Yeah. All the best. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so. See you guys soon. Wait, 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 wait. Someone is impersonating me. No, you shared your link. So I think it picks your name. Ah. <laughs> wow. Okay, thanks. Well, yeah. there is only one real me. <laughs> <laughs> there is only me, and I am of the one talking. Who wants to fascinate you? Who wants to impersonate you? Like, why would they impersonate you? <laughs> Who am I, right? No, you okay, okay, That's okay, not okay, I understand. I understand. I understand. I will tell you in the nearest future who I am. Why would they impersonate you? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's just unfair Thank for them to impersonate you. Deep, right? deep learning guys are starting now. Take your discussion. <laughs> All right. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. You so thanks, much. man. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.